let's talk about eccentricity. What the heck is it? How do we use it? And how do we use it in a real world problem? So this is the formal definition of eccentricity. It comes from your A, your uh, technically your B, but your A and your C value. So if you have A and you have C, you're great. But if you have only A and B, you need to calculate for C to finish this solve. But what exactly is eccentricity? Yes, we can use this formula to solve for eccentricity. But here is a nice uh, gif of exactly what eccentricity is. So if I'm looking at those two plot points, man, I thought I had a larger, better one of this. Nope, I guess I don't. Okay, so if I'm looking at these two plot points, this would be an eccentricity of um, exactly one would make a circle. And then as your values toggle between uh, one and negative one and one and zero and all of that information, your shape changes. So what do you notice about that eccentricity? And um, perhaps by the next video, I might have a uh, gif up of what that actually looks like when you go from a line to a parabola to an ellipse to a circle to a hyperbola. So again, eccentricity deals with the shape which shape is it can be determined from your eccentricity. So let's determine eccentricity of an ellipse. Remember, E is just equal to C divided by A. So I know my A value. I know my B value. I don't quite know my C value. A must be plus or minus 8. B must be plus or minus 6. So if I know all this information, let's plug it into our C formula right here. Uh, and since it is a squared and b squared, we can use 64 and 36. So I went ahead and used that information. And c is the square root of 28. So my eccentricity is going to be the square root of 28 divided by 8. We have to use a calculator to finish that solve. So I went ahead and plugged it into my handy dandy TI Inspire. If you don't have access to it, use desmos.com slash calculator. Don't use scientific because it doesn't always give you a good number of decimal places to use. So we get approximately 0 0.666. That is our eccentricity. Ta-da. So if a question was just asking that, you're done. Let's do one more together determine the entry eccentricity. And the reason why I did this one is because the first thing you need to do is convert it to standard. And a lot of y'all still struggle with that. So I thought one more example might be good. First thing I do is I separate my X's from my Y's. And if I had to, I'd move my constant over. Now I need a perfect square, but to perfectly square it, let's go ahead and deal with the chaos that is this because we can factor. There is a commonality between 36 and 144 and 49 and 98. In fact, 36 goes into 144 four times, and 49 is two, uh, two times to get to 98. So how do I complete this perfect square? 4 divided by 2 squared is still 4. Great, we completed our perfect square. But 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is just 1. So now we have completed our perfect square here. But anything we add to the left-hand side must be added to the right-hand side including the factor we drew out. So if I'm adding 4 on the left, I'm not. I'm actually adding 36 times 4. If I'm adding 1 on the left, I'm not. I'm actually adding 49 times 1. Do not forget what you factored out is what I'm trying to tell you. So now I do my perfect square, perfect square, perfect square. And now all that's left is the right-hand side. I need it to equal 1. So I divide by itself. Butterfly it on the left. Butterfly it. There it is, okay? And now I can simplify. Does any does 36 go into 17, 64, and 49 go into it? They sure do, actually. So I went ahead and simplified it, and now I have my standard form. But it didn't want me to get standard form. It wants me to get eccentricity. So I know that C is equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. So this is going to be 49 minus 36. Yep, yep, yep. Same information I just did. There we go. And we get the square root of 13. So my eccentricity is going to be the square root of 13 divided by, uh, should just say 7, but the square root of 49, okay? And then we end up putting that in a calculator and we get 0 0.52. But I don't necessarily need you to calculate eccentricity by itself. I do need you to understand how to use it in a real world problem. So this is the type of question you're going to be solving for yourself. The eccentricity of the orbit of Uranus is 0 0.47. Its orbit around the sun has a major axis length of 38.36 AU, where AU is astronomical units. What is the length of the minor axis of this orbit? Oh my god, we can totally do that if we have characteristics of 
our axis length. But unfortunately, there is a relationship from eccentricity to the length that we need to show you. So I'm going to preview this type of question. We're, we're given the eccentricity. So that means we have a formula for the relationship between uh, C and A. We also know the length of our major axis. So we know 2A. Hmm. We know our units, so because it's a real-world problem, we need to know our uh, how we're answering. And where our question is, what is the length of the minor axis? So I want to know 2 times b. So if I know eccentricity, and I know my major axis is 2a, and I'm looking for my minor axis, let's solve that out. So written out with just the information we pulled from that and converted it into math notation, let's plug in what we know. So if e is c over a, then that's 0 0.47 is C over A. And if 38.36 is 2 times A, then divide by 2 and you get your A value. So now I can calculate my C value. Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. And if I know A and I know C, then I can calculate my B value. So I plug in what I knew. This value came from um, your C squared. This value came from your A squared. And where did A come from? It came from the length of the major axis, which was given. So I finished my solve using a calculator. I to deal with the negatives. I square root. And I end up with B is equal to, to uh, technically plus or minus 16.9295. But if we know B, we can multiply by 2 to get the minor axis length. So we got our answer. The length of the minor axis of the orbit is 35.858. If I went a little fast or if I confused you, all I was doing is taking information I was given, putting it in the form of its characteristic, and solving backwards. Rewatch re this example, though, if it was a struggle. But now it's your attempt to solve a very similar question.